January has not been boring, and the first week of February will not be all that dull either. We've got a lot to talk about on Weather for Weather Geeks this evening. Uh, happy Monday evening to you, everyone. Hope you had a good weekend. Let's get right into it. And before we take a deep dive, of course, into our upcoming winter storm, since it is the final day and final hours of January, we'll uh, look at the a quick review of temperatures compared to December. Of course, we had a very mild December, but January a full 16 and a half, even a little more, uh, degrees colder than the month of December. Now, this was not a record-setting January or anything like that when it comes to temperatures or snowfall, but it was our snowiest January since 2018 and our coldest January since 2015. So, yeah, big, big change compared to the first month of meteorological winter, which was, of course, fairly benign. What about February? Well, we're going to have a big uh, winter storm and plenty of cold in the upcoming days. And there'll be some cold from time to time, of course, in the month of February, as there always is. But the overall flavor of February will be different than January. January's been kind of a, has had kind of a bitter flavor, if you will. Uh, February, the cold shots will be more brief, more intermittent, if you will. And I do think, especially in the second half of the month, we have some pretty good chances of more prolonged, mild periods. So, again, it's going to be cold in February. We're going to have snow. We're going to have winter storms in February, as we almost always do. But the month as a whole should come out in the wash as quite a bit milder then January. What about precipitation? Odds are favoring above average precipitation in the month of February across the Ohio Valley, the lower Great Lakes. Some of this, of course, will be frozen precipitation. Sometimes it will be snow. All right, first day of February, real quickly on Tuesday. This is going to be the nicest day we've had in a couple weeks. Uh, starting out with a seasonable uh, start to the day, upper teens to around 20. Already touching freezing, though, by late morning and heading for the lower 40s in the afternoon. That sounds awfully nice. All right, let's get to it. Uh, lots and lots of chatter online starting this weekend and even continuing today. And one of the chief culprits, of course, has been the Weather Channel forecast, which everybody is seeing and passing along. And uh, sometimes I wonder why people follow their local meteorologists when they are uh, so uh, zealous about uh, the national weather outlets. But yes, yeah, so the Weather Channel uh, app and some of the maps they've been posting mostly computer generated, uh, are showing big time snowfall totals for us. I will get to what I expect as far as snow and ice here momentarily, but the first thing we're going to see is just plain old rain. That'll be on Wednesday. We'll be above freezing Wednesday. We will see raindrops. This will be mostly low impact. I'm not expecting any problems. Uh, as far as weather concerns for your travels getting out and about during the day on Wednesday. But then late Wednesday night into Thursday morning. This is when trouble starts brewing. This front slips just far enough to the south that very cold air in the lowest levels of the atmosphere starts bleeding south and east. So down here on the ground where we are, it's cold. It's near or below freezing. The problem is upstairs, a couple of thousand feet in the atmosphere, up above our heads, it'll be near or even above freezing. And so that introduces the possibility, even the likelihood, of some sort of a wintry shenanigans when it comes to precipitation type. The farther south you are, the higher the risk is for a mixed bag all day Thursday of sleet and freezing rain. The farther north you are, the higher the odds of more sleet than freezing rain and also the possibility of some wet snow during the daylight hours on Thursday. By Thursday night, after sunset Thursday evening into the overnight Thursday night, the entire region has an increased chance of just seeing snow as the air column continues to cool both down here at the ground and above our heads. But during the daylight hours Thursday, uh, we're going to see kind of a potpourri, I think, of wintry precipitation. And some of this uh, will be uh, very problematic because uh, we're talking about perhaps significant amounts of ice. When it comes to the odds of a blockbuster snow event Thursday and into Thursday night, the odds are definitely higher to our north and west. So in places like Cleveland and Sandusky and Lima and Toledo and Detroit, Fort Wayne, South Bend, places like that, uh, very good odds of a big time snow event. Probably much more than six inches in, in a good chunk of that area. Once you get down into our TV viewing area, the odds of six inches or more decrease. I'm not saying we're not going to get six inches anywhere. I'm saying the odds are lower in most of our area than they are closer to I-90 off to the north and to the north and west uh, along the Ohio Turnpike heading up towards Cleveland. 
in our television viewing area specifically, probably the highest odds of six inches or more worth of snow, in other words, a big time snow event, uh, would be once you're north of, say, for example, Southington, up towards Mesopotamia, Bloomfield, maybe Kinsman, maybe Greenville. Those places have the highest odds. It's no guarantee, but they have the highest odds of seeing six inches or more worth of snow. And uh, their odds are higher in those locations because they have an increased chance of seeing snowflakes during the daylight hours Thursday. Again, most of our area should see snow Thursday night. During the daylight hours Thursday, uh, there may be less ice and more snow in those far northern areas. The odds of significant ice, and what I mean by significant, enough to make your driveway very slippery, enough that you really got to scrape your car windshield uh, if it's been sitting out in this, enough to make untreated surfaces real slick and it also introduce the possibility of enough ice to weigh down tree limbs, power lines, maybe cause power problems, that sort of thing. The highest odds, kind of bisecting our viewing area, roughly kind of the southern and eastern part of our TV viewing area and points south. Anywhere south of us, Steubenville, Wheeling, Cambridge, Pittsburgh, uh, places such as that. Uh, that's not to say you won't have problems with ice to the north, it's just the odds of significant ice are lower the farther north you go. So yeah, no matter what the amounts, it's all going to be impactful. And I'm just going to show you a few computer models here showing the amount of ice they're advertising. A caveat, I do not believe some of these real high totals. Uh, the European model and the NAM model are both suggesting that ice accretion on your tree limbs, power lines, on your sidewalk, that sort of thing, could be up to three quarters of an inch or so. That would be catastrophic, and I don't think that's very likely at all. But that's some of the raw model output. Again, that's very, very unlikely. That would be, you know, nearing a historic ice storm for our region. Can I rule that out 100%? No, but I think it's very, very unlikely. I think what is more likely is that we end up somewhere in this vicinity, kind of the border between a nuisance ice event and a pretty major ice event. Not historic, not crippling necessarily, but a significant ice event. Once you see ice accretion levels getting up to two tenths of an inch or a quarter of an inch. So that sounds like a small number, but you know, this much ice on your car and on the roads and on power lines and on tree limbs, that can be pretty problematic. And so once you get up to that kind of magic 0.25 number, that's when we typically see many, many more problems than when you see like maybe a tenth of an inch of ice. Generally, that's manageable. It causes slick surfaces. Uh, some surfaces can be very slick with that amount of ice. But once you get up closer to a quarter of an inch, then you got some real problems. I think we could be you know, nearing that um, with this event in, in much of our area. But the thing to keep in mind, don't get too caught up in numbers, whether you're looking at the Weather Channel app or the map or anything else. You'll notice I'm not talking numbers just yet because today's only Monday. Um, but no matter the numbers, whether it's two inches of snow and a lot more ice or a lot of snow and a little bit of ice, it's all high impact. And so if you have travel plans, if you've got to get to a doctor's appointment, uh, et cetera, et cetera, plan on it being very impactful, whatever's falling from the sky, starting by daybreak on Thursday and taking us all the way through about daybreak on Friday. Um, so main roads, secondary roads, you name it, this is going to be high impact, uh, whether you get a lot of snow or a lot of ice. And I, you know, I would strongly suspect that uh, you're going to have to plan on the kids being off of school later this week. Not my area of expertise, but uh, in this kind of a setup, it seems like a pretty good bet. And just a quick reminder of, you know, these different precipitation types. Um, you know, we haven't had a lot of mixed precipitation events just yet this season. Uh, freezing rain is just rain that freezes on contact. Doesn't have a chance to melt on the way down. Uh, the air from the cloud level all the way close to the ground is above 32. And so it stays rain, but the problem is right at ground level and then the ground itself is at or below 32, so it freezes. Sleet is when snowflakes melt into raindrops in a shallow warm layer aloft, and when I say warm, I mean above 32. But then it encounters sub-32 air in a deeper layer on the way down, so it refreezes. But raindrops don't refreeze back into snowflakes. Uh, that's impossible physically. It refreezes into little ice pellets. And so oftentimes you hear sleet. It makes a kind of a, a pinging noise on things. It, it's a little bouncy sometimes. Uh, sleet is much more preferable to freezing rain when it comes to impacts on tree limbs, power lines, and the roads. It can still be slick if you get enough sleet, but it, generally speaking, is not as problematic as, as freezing rain, which uh, can turn things into uh, a virtual skating rink. And of course, snow occurs when the entire air column 
is below freezing. And so the uh, the snow uh, does not do any melting on the way down. So we're going to root for sleet. And in some circumstances, we'll even root for snow over freezing rain. What you don't want out of this is a bunch of freezing rain. What you do want is more of this stuff. I know no one, especially after a long few weeks, uh, is real excited to see a bunch of snow and some sleet and some muck. But you want that more than the freezing rain in most circumstances. Well, I've had a lot to say this evening. I'll have a lot more to say on social media. And tonight on 21 News at 11. And you can look for updates anytime on the Storm Tracker 21 app. Tap on Daily down at the bottom to uh, get those typed details that humans here in downtown Youngstown have typed into the app. If you're an Android user and you have not downloaded the Storm Tracker 21 app just yet, it is currently unavailable in the Google Play Store due to some uh, issues we're having with, uh, with uh, Google. Uh, we hope to have that resolved very soon. Now, if you've already downloaded it, if you've had it for a long time on your Android device, it'll continue to work. But if you have an Android device, something other than an iPhone, um, you are not going to be able to download it to your device right now. And we apologize for that, but it's out of our hands for the time being. We're, we're trying to get it resolved as fast as possible. In the meantime, thanks for watching tonight's Weather for Weather Geeks. I'll see you right back here for a fresh edition of this same video 